two students who are career, citizenship, and college ready. The second goal really amounts to providing those diverse opportunities I just spoke to in the mission. And the third, fostering a faculty experience that makes the faculty the best they can be for our students. The fourth goal, um, including parents and other community members in the process and as a resource for our schools and for our students. And finally, goal number five, which really speaks to the budget process, speaks to the financing of our district. Um, we definitely are interested in creating the balance between what we need to provide for our students and the affordability of that. <clears throat> Here's a quote I, I really found, and I think um, it's a good one to read and reflect on. If our actions consistently support our stated core beliefs, then we'll move closer to achieving that vision that we set for our school district, which is of course to be the regional model of excellence for everyone to exemplify. Next, um, we move to the expenditure slide. Um, I can let you take a look at that really briefly. This will also be on our website, um, so I won't go into too much detail unless there are questions. This is expenditures, in other words, um, what we propose to spend or expend um, on our students. It includes uh, salary increases, between two and five percent increases according to contractual requirements, uh, BOCES service increases, ERS and TRS increases, workman's compensation, health and dental coverage as well. The revenues we expect um, to fund this budget come from various, um, various places. We always take a conservative approach when we're calculating these revenues because even as of today, um, we finally will have a budget from the state, um, deliverable and something we can get our heads around, but we knew that there would be a 3% increase in foundation aid alone, and that's pretty much what this budget has been built on. In this slide, it's uh, important to note the tax levy increase that's always on the minds of our, our citizen taxpayers. But this is a 4.47% increase on the tax levy, which is uh, with, at our maximum allowable tax levy limit. It does not require a supermajority vote, just the simple majority. Overall, we're looking at a budget that has increased um, by 2.93%. We try to keep that increase from year to year between 2 and 3%. And so um, this, this budget um, fulfills that, that goal. To explain, to ex explain um, state aid a little bit further, it's, it's divided into different areas, and the foundation area in gray there is what I spoke to about that being the 3% increase, which is something we can really uh, certainly count on. And I do go into some detail to try to explain what state aid uh, covers, that expense-driven aids, the foundation aid, excess costs, and finally, we get to the presentation of each component of the budget. There are three components. They are administrative, capital, and program components. And you can see from the pie chart the percentage that each takes from our budget. Um, starting with the administrative component, um, that is roughly 7.8% uh, of the budget in the amount of $3,281,945. This funds our Board of Education, Central Administration, our financing, legal and personnel, our principals, uh, their support staff, and other ser uh, central services and special agents, meaning uh, BOCES administrative costs as well. These are broken down in the following slides. The total administrative component at the bottom right is about a 2% increase over last year. And again, I always like to explain things. I think it's the teacher in me, but we go into some detail um, listing for you in bullet form what is contained under each of those subcomponents of the administrative component. And that continues into the next slide. Let's move to the capital component of the budget. It's a little bit larger, the administrative uh, component, and capital is about uh, about 19.5% of our budget in the amount of $8,217,531. This goes for the maintenance of plant, um, it goes for the operation of our plants, our facilities, 
uh, central printing, printing services, data processing, uh, real property tax refunds, uh, transfers to the capital, capital outlay project, which we'll see a little bit later in this presentation, other BOCES administrative costs, and of course, employee benefits. And you will find our, um, usually our classified staff in this component of the budget, meaning custodians, uh, nurses, any of those folks who are not certified teachers or teaching assistants, principals, that sort of thing. In some detail, the two largest expense uh, increases were in maintenance of plant, where we added a $100,000 line item to help fund uh, some of those maintenance pieces that we couldn't ordinarily fund if we didn't do a capital project, for example. And debt service, of course, um, this is for front-loading some of those debt payments we're going to be seeing from our upcoming uh, capital projects, one of them the energy performance contract, and the other one what we're calling the medium capital project, which the voters have approved both. And again, a little bit of an explanation of the subcomponents of the capital component. They're there for your review, especially if you go online and take a look at the, the budget presentation that you're seeing here tonight. Capital outlay, I've explained to the board, uh, we adopted this idea three years ago where we fund uh, through our budget a line item of $100,000. This goes for some smaller cost items that can also receive state aid if gone through the proper channels, which we do. In, in this case, um, we're looking next year to take out two more oil tanks. We took out one this year, one at Knox and one at Pleasant Avenue. A little bit more detail about how that capital outlay works. We receive 90 cents on a dollar for every dollar we spend on those capital projects or capital outlay projects. And finally, to the largest component of our budget, over 30 million, almost 31 million dollars, 73% of our budget primarily. This is for all the teaching academic subjects, transportation, special education, library media, material supplies, textbooks, BOCES programs, instructional salaries, and benefits. We have built a budget here um, with instruction, transportation, interfund transfers, employee benefits for total co program component increase of 2.68% um, from the previous year. This includes salary increases, BOCES services increases, and benefits increases as well. There's a general breakdown of those um, components, as you see. Salary, you can take a look for yourself at the increase in dollars. Uh, Non-salary items, employee benefits, and there's your $800,000 increase from year to year, represented in just salary and benefits primarily. A little bit more detail on how we spend money in the instructional subcomponent of this component of the budget, uh, where regular school is about a $300,000 increase, uh, special education or students with disabilities, media, educational technology, and student services and activities. We have a transportation plan here in Johnstown really essential and tied closely to our long-range planning. And we know that we need to purchase and keep our fleet in tip-top shape for excellent safety. Uh, we do have an excellent safety record. The district owns its buses. And each year, we do replenish our bus fleet with between one and three new buses. And we do have a plan for that. Um, and this slide here sort of shows you what our plan has been before the event of the idea of electric buses which now puts a bit of a wrench in this plan. And we are actually going out for two buses in the proposition for the voters to approve, rather than our normal three, because, and then I think you'll see in the following years, uh, between one and two buses uh, asked for, uh, because with that event of electric buses coming on, it's not a good idea to have too much in our fleet that we'll need replacing anyway, uh, according to law. I'm very happy to present these slides. There are just a few pages of these. A reminder that this budget funds our universal pre-K program. We now have full pre-K 
days for three classrooms, and next year it will be housed in, El in Pleasant Avenue and Elementary School. Our comprehensive instructional plan continues, it's ongoing. Um, we believe in this idea of continuous improvement, and this plan is comprehensive. It, it collects together every effort we're doing as a district in one plan, cohesive articulation between the plans, and it's very important for us to have, and we look at it annually. Long-range financial planning, as the board knows, our audit budget finance committee spend a lot of time taking a look at the long-range planning, including our reserve plan, which plays very importantly in this budget. Moving next, uh, some of the things to look forward to next year. Most people don't know that over 40 of our elementary staff have been training on the equivalent of a master's degree level in the science of reading. And with that sort of certification, with that sort of training, um, we hope that the science of reading will help continue improving our scores even more than it already has. Um, we have already seen 10% increase in reading abilities in our elementary school students over the last year. Calling your attention to the central column, social emotional academic learning, where you'll often hear SEAL, our SEAL team. Um, you can read for yourself that coming out of the pandemic, we had a lot of challenges ahead of us. So we utilized the federal funds that came from ARP and CRISA to build our, so our SEAL team. And the second bullet, you'll see those, some of those folks that we plan to hire and have in each building, including psychologists, behavioral specialists, school counselors, and social workers as well. And it's, it's good news to brag about an ever-improving graduation rate. Um, we now report a graduation rate of 93%. It's the highest in over 25 years. Wow, that's great. We also are doing a better job of identifying risks in students earlier. Um, some of those programs were put in place like attendance mentors, um, operation graduation to help our students get to that point. And um, I think most noteworthy, when you have 100% of your special education students graduating, that is a real, um, a real feather in any district's cap. So we're, we should be very proud of the efforts of our teachers to that extent. Also next year, we have a Knox reopening. We have a reconfiguration of grade levels. Um, we all know how we closed three buildings and we're, we're suited up to open up the Knox building called Knox Middle School next year. A little bit about our SEAL team again. I think that's a mistake because I already said that once. But um, curricular and extracurricular programs are continuing. Uh, we, we look at those, we, we evaluate those every year for their effectiveness and relevance. While it doesn't seem like we cut much, uh, we're certainly right-sizing things. Um, we take a look at programs, we take a look at student participation and the relevance they have for students and their experience here. And um, of, of, of important note, I think, is that the school has evaluated its league membership recently. And I think uh, a move to the Western Athletic Conference starting in 2024-25 will also help our students in their athletic pursuits. We have, we have several capital projects going on at this point. We're finishing up on our small capital project, expecting the track around Knox Field to be completed this summer, heading then into our medium capital project and EPC capital projects, which I mentioned earlier. Yes, ma'am. Will the um, will Knox, the entire campus of Knox, be closed the entire summer, or will it just be just the track area? Just the track area. Okay. Just the track and field area. Yep. Um, let's see. We are on this particular budget uh, year uh, putting in front of the voters um, three propositions other than the actual budget vote. They are asking the public to vote on a 2023 capital reserve fund, a bus purchase, which I already talked to you a little bit about for two school buses. And we have two Board of Education trustee seats um, this year, of course, we're at eight Board of Education members this year, going to seven next year, from nine the year before. Um, 
Finally, this is the proposed budget summary. It just sort of outlines what our proposed budget amount is, the estimated state aid, the tax levy we hope to uh, collect from our citizen taxpayers, other budget revenue, and the use of our fund balances and reserves. And in the event that the budget doesn't pass for some reason, every school is uh, required by law to have a contingency budget in place. And this can be no more um, tax levy collected than the previous year. And it's basically what it uh, amounts to. So we would have to take that tax levy increase and find ways to fund that, uh, to fill a gap. This particular budget, um, I feel pretty strongly as a superintendent, and I would recommend to the board, uh, should this budget go down, that we don't change our spending plan, but we use more from our fund balance uh, to make up that gap. This is a reminder slide that our budget vote is coming up on May 16th, and the time is 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., and the location will be at the Johnson Junior Senior High School, soon to be the Johnson High School. So thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Having none, we'll complete the